had a thought the other day, which is usually dangerous for me. I was looking at all these Switch games basking in the glory, and I was thinking if for whatever reason I ever had to sell my game, if I could only keep 10, what 10 would those be? Like, what games could I just not live without? And that thought led to another interesting thought as I realized it wasn't necessarily the best games on Switch. I've already finished them. So do I really need to hang on to them? Do I really need to keep them? Am I ever going to play them again? Which games insert themselves into this freaking Switch in and out and in and out and in and out time and time again on a monthly basis. And that's how I got my top 10. <laughs> I do not think the games on my list are the best games on Switch. These are my personal favorite games that I come back to time and time again. Feel free to leave your 10 down below because everyone's gonna have really different games when you think about it. People that might have big families might have a list full of party games. Or maybe if you're the kind of person that enjoys only playing solo single player games, your list ain't gonna have any co-op or multiplayer games in it because all you need is some single player goodness to get you through the weekend. I don't know what you're about. This is just what I'm about. So leave it down below and don't judge me. Don't judge me. Is this all making sense? Have I dragged this intro out long enough? Oh, uh, with all that said, um, this happened the other day. So you're really dumb. What, me? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why would you say that? Where do I even begin? You can't spell to save your life. You're terrible at graphic design. You never learned how to actually play guitar. You're even screwing up editing this right now. Look at this. What's happening here? Uh, shut up. <laughs> Where would I even learn all of that stuff? Uh, maybe on Skillshare? You know, that incredible online learning community? Where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes and they sponsor you like every single month, so how about you actually use them? As I have said many times before, I do actually use and love Skillshare. Recently, I took Geordie's Masterclass on Premiere Pro and I learned how to build scenes and create cool effects. And in the past, I have taken courses on how to learn guitar. I just forgotten everything that I learned, but that's totally on me. <laughs> and the first 1,000 people to use my link down in the description will get two months of free Skillshare Premium, so you can explore your creativity. Well, technically it's my link, but yes, click it down below. Nah, 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 nah. You can't own a link. Besides, it's mine. It is mine. I mean, you two are fictional versions of me that I created and you couldn't even exist together without my editing capabilities, so technically it's my link. Oh, I hate that guy. Oh yeah, he's ugly. So starting with number 10, I had a really hard time filling this spot because there was 15 other games that I kept switching in and I couldn't make my mind up and ultimately I settled on on Pokemon Sword and Shield, which might surprise a lot of you because I had a love-hate relationship with it for a while. But here's how I broke it down in my head. I have put in over a hundred hours into the game and I have my main team of fellas who I love and adore. I caught myself and it took a long time to hatch them. A shiny Lucario, a shiny Dragapult, and I was gifted a, a shiny Toxicity from a fan. I love my, my guys, I love my fellas. I wouldn't feel right selling and getting rid of the game and never being able to check up on them again. But that's that personal attachment aside, there's DLC. And that was ultimately the clinch pit for me in this. And there's more DLC. That was the big thing. Whatever the heck of the tundra, the icy tundra of death, I don't know what they called it. I can't miss out on that. That DLC and the game in general is a perfect jump on Switch when I don't know what else to play. It's just casual chill, perfect game to play while streaming or up in bed at night. I don't know. Don't judge me. That's, that's just what I picked for those reasons. Let's keep going. <laughs> I think the next one is really going to be the one that surprises a lot of you because it's a game I don't believe I have ever mentioned on my channel. And um, it's Jackbox. Really random, I know. Kim and I, we saw Jackbox on the Switch and we decided to download it and try it out. If you don't know what it is, it's a ton of mini party games, but then you actually play the game with your phones. And there's a bunch of different Jackbox packs. Personal favorite is the third one because it has Quiplash and it has Trivial Murder Pursuit or whatever it's called. Every time Kim and I have friends over, which hasn't happened in a long time because COVID, but every time we have a group of friends over, it's the first thing we wanna do. We are those people. You know 
know how you have that group of friends that every time you go over, they just have to bust out their game of choice? Like you have your Uno friends, you have your board game friends, freaking Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons style. I wish I played Dungeons and Dragons, but you know what I mean? Well, Kim and I, we're the Jackbox friends, where if you're coming over to our house, you know that you're going to be subjected to at least a few rounds of Jackbox. And for that reason, I can't get it off my Switch. I can't lose it. It's too much fun. We love it too much. So I know it's a really random number nine, um, but it's a lot of fun, and that's my number nine. I don't know how much number eight is going to surprise you. Another game I've only talked about a couple of times on my channel. It's my, my, Minecraft. <laughs> so, uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2. That's a game I absolutely fell in love with. I had never played Minecraft and everyone was telling me to try Minecraft. So, the one video I have on my channel about Minecraft is me playing Minecraft for the first time. I was maybe gonna make it a series, but it, it was just a mess. I had no idea what I was doing. Trying to play Minecraft for the first time is really hard. <laughs> I had no idea. It wasn't a bad video, but I just never talked about Minecraft again after that. However, I kept playing it, but I think I play Minecraft weird. Minecraft has become that game for me that whenever I run out of new games to play, which I know it, it really shouldn't happen, but sometimes I just don't feel like playing anything in particular. I always end up circling back around to Minecraft because I really enjoy that feeling of starting a brand new world, just completely fresh, forgetting about anything I've done before, exploring this brand new randomized area, digging, finding iron and gold, making myself a little iron armor outfit. And usually what I do is I I keep playing until I have a little hut, a little house with a chest and a little doggo. And then I, I, I find some diamond and uh, that's when I stop. I know there's so much more you can do, but I'll stop playing. I'll start playing other actual games, but then like a month later, I'll come back and I'll start a brand new world and do it all over again. It's therapeutic. It's really relaxing. It's also because I don't talk about that game. Very often when I'm playing games, I'm playing them to talk about or review. I'm trying to rush through them, but Minecraft, I just sit there and I peacefully mine away at some diamond and then <laughs> delete the world and start a new one. And I love it. I don't think I'd ever want to lose that. It's just, I don't know, weird therapy. With games like Astral Chain and Fire Emblem Three Houses, I love those games. They're so good, but I get stuck at that same position on a list like this where I'm like, yeah, they're great, but I don't see myself needing them again now that I finished them once or twice already. In saying that, I don't think I would ever want to be without Dragon Quest XI-S. Not so much because I want to replay it again and again and again more than I already have, but because I absolutely fell in love with that game to the same level that I fell in love with Ocarina of Time the first time I ever played it. I'd never played a main series Dragon Quest game before and I really didn't know what to expect and I immediately felt like I had missed out on years and years of a franchise that I would have absolutely adored my entire life. And this again is very personal and a very weird reason to keep it, but I feel attached to it. I feel a connection to that game and I just wouldn't want to get rid of it because it wouldn't feel right. Will I play it again? I don't know, because I don't know if I have time, but I don't want to let go of it. And I also ultimately decided that it was worth a spot on the list because on Switch, it is the definitive version of the game. It has a brand new symphonic soundtrack. It has a 16-bit mode where you can switch between the HD and 16-bit. And while visually it takes a little bit of a hit over the PlayStation 4 counterpart, I still think it looks gorgeous and plays perfectly on the system. For those reasons, I really do feel like it's the definitive way to play the game. Number six is Mario Kart 8. How, how could you, how could I not have Mario Kart 8? I don't ever play Mario Kart 8 on my own. I did when the game originally came out on Wii U, and then even when the Deluxe launched on Switch, I couldn't get enough of that game. I love it. It's the best Mario Kart. But now it's specifically reserved to when friends want to play a game, either online or when they come over, Mario Kart is always a go-to. I love Smash, but Smash, it really involves a particular set of skills. Whoever is the more skilled player is going to be the one that wins every single time. And that gets a little frustrating for the other people playing unless they get lucky or they really do well for a change. But Mario Kart 8, I feel like even when you're losing, you're winning. It's just so much fun. And really, all it takes is one blue shell or a couple of slip ups and anyone can win. And having said that, I usually don't lose. But that's why I love the game. You can't have a Switch and not have Mario Kart 8. It's a no-brainer. Speaking of Smash Bros, the next one is Smash Bros. I know what I just said, but I love this game so much more than Mario Kart. I adore Smash Brothers. I always have. I, I really do have a special connection with this game. I still remember going to Blockbuster, finding Smash on the shelf, and just being in complete awe of the idea that Link, who I had just discovered in Ocarina of Time, was in this fighter. I didn't really know who Samus was. I knew who Pikachu was. I knew 
who Kirby was. I didn't really know who Fox was, to be honest. And playing that game made me want to go out and find who all these characters were. So when Metroid released on GameCube, I picked it up right away and then I fell in love with that series because of my love of Smash. That's a little bit of a retro throwback to why I love Smash so much, but the newest one is by far the best one. I feel like I'm pretty good at it, even though I don't do so well online. I do like to try sometimes, every now and then. But if there was another reason to hold on to this game, we're still not done with the characters. There's no way I can get rid of this game while there's still, what, five more DLC characters to come out? I wanna know who those are. And I've actually really been loving the ones that we have Byleth. I know a lot of y'all weren't happy about that, but he's in my top three mains. He's awesome. Hero, what a perfect timing to get Hero in Smash for me after falling in love with Dragon Quest XI-S. I really love Hero as well. So yeah, not getting rid of Smash. There's no way that would ever happen, even after the DLC characters, but especially before. Oh, all this talk about Dragon Quest and y'all knew it was coming. <laughs> Number four is Dragon Quest Builders 2. Dragon Quest Builders 2 is easily the game I've spent the most amount of time in. And it's not one that I feel like I'm done with, even though I haven't played in a while. I still want to dive back in. I just need to find the time to do it. But it's not a game I am willing to get rid of at all. And even if this was a list of 10 must-own Switch games, you better believe I would still put that one in the list. It also has a really long, fleshed out and charming story that you can play through, and then once you finally hit the end of that, you're just free to do whatever you want and build whatever you want. Even talking about it now, I really want to get back into it. Maybe that's a game I can jump on and stream soon, because I never finished my aquarium I was building. I never finished a lot of things! That's why I can't get rid of it. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. These are so obvious. These are so obvious. Number three is Mario Odyssey. It is arguably the best game on Switch. Mario Odyssey is by far the best, the best 3D platformer I've ever played. It's innovative, charming, and just fun. Every single element of this game is fun. Also, I'm not getting rid of my favorite 3D platformer ever. Come on. Number two is Animal Crossing. <laughs> Animal Crossing stole my friggin' heart, man. I didn't think I would like it. I honestly wasn't sure. But not only did I end up liking the game, I ended up loving the game, adoring the game, and finding it so cute and adorable. My villagers, man, I love them. I, I got rid of the one I didn't like, and we all saw that. Yes! I got brought back in because of the new diving event, which I'm having so much fun with, and it adds a whole nother level of depth. <laughs> Get it? Depth. That event brought me back into the game, and and all my villagers were like, we haven't seen you in a month. What you've been up to? I felt so bad. I can't leave them forever. I at least need to check in once a month and make sure they're all doing okay. On top of that, Nintendo have already said that they're going to be continually updating this game for like three years. And seeing such big additions like being able to go diving and the entire mermaid craftable items and all of that. I would hate to miss out on future events like that. I'm really excited to see what's coming. Also, it changes every season. I haven't seen it snow in the game. They change bugs and fish and all that stuff every month. Like, there's always something new to do in this game. It's a living, breathing ecosystem that I can't just get rid of. Once you start, you really can't stop. Unless you hate the game and you don't care about your villagers, and then... You know, you do you, pal. All right, let's... Okay, fine. You all know what number one is, but let me really quickly appease some of you that are just so frustrated that I didn't mention your favorite game and do some really quick blasting through special mentions. Mario Maker 2, Splatoon 2, Goose Game, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Luigi's Mansion 3, Stardew Valley, Golf Story, Celeste, Hollow Knight. All of those are fantastic, incredible, beautiful games. If you have a Switch and you're looking for things to buy, pick one of these and you'll have a great time. The reason why they didn't make my list is, again, get in my freaking head, guys. Get in my mind space. Games that I can't live without moving forward. Games like Luigi's Mansion 3 and Fire Emblem. Oh, what great games, right? But I'm probably never honestly going to play them again. I had my time with them. I'm moving on with my life. Same with Golf Story. Same with Hollow Knight. But those are my special mentions. They're all great games. All fantastic games. All right, <laughs> okay. My absolute number one that I, I just could not sell, I could not, I could not, y'all know it, 
uh, Breath of the Wild. I love this game way too much to get rid of it. One, two, it has so much replay value. People are still finding cool little tips and tricks and things you can do in the game that no one knew until now. I am really enjoying playing through the game again with you guys on my channel, even though we have to hit 20,000 likes to get part five. But the last one still hasn't hit 20,000 likes. It sat on like 19,900 still after months. And I am a man of my word. I'm not giving in, okay? I said 20, it's 20. You want another part? You gotta hit like on the videos. <laughs> Hit like on this video while you're here as well. I hope you had a good time watching it. I hope it was entertaining and engaging. I feel like it's turned out okay. But I'm so out of ideas right now. <laughs> Games aren't really coming out right now. I reviewed the ones that I wanted to review. I'm just kind of sat twiddling my thumbs, wondering what I should make next. So if you have any video ideas, whether it's a video I've done in the past, you want to see me make a new version or a, a new episode of, or you just have a new idea for me, please leave them below, because I'm just in a creative slump right now. But anyway, leave your list down below. I hope you understood my list. I love you all. I used to hair flip on that subscribe button now. I just kiss. <laughs> I'm never doing it again. Bye.